Hey guys, April Henry here, back from my 43rd Facebook Live. You can watch all my previous ones on my website, aprilhenry.com, or on my YouTube channel, which is also called April Henry. I'm, my plan is to do these every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time until I run out of topics. I've also been posting prompts every weekday, but those I'm going to let go after this week. Um, although you can still find all of my old prompts for writing, and I welcome if anyone wants to submit any writing generated by those prompts. So today I went running. Um, this is uh, our, we're beginning our 10th week of lockdown. And um, who knew that if you did something a lot, you would get better at it. I had the best time I've had in probably five or six years for the same route that I run uh, three to four times a week. So to me, that's a lesson that if we work on something, we get better at it, which shouldn't be um, too, too amazing a revelation, but it made me think about writing. Also, when I was running up this steep hill, I um, did something that I do a lot when I'm running and I don't, and I'm having a hard time, is that I focus on something that's only about 10 feet away, like a stick or a piece of paper, and I run to that and then I find a new focus. And I think that can help us with our writing, just like Annie Lamott talks about bird by bird, um, keeping our focus small and limited and not worrying about the bigger picture, not freaking out. And maybe that is actually a good lesson for the pandemic as well. Um, I've been talking about books I like. So here's one. There's one of my favorite books, Anya, by Susan Fomberg Schaefer. I got to hear her speak. Um, gosh, it's probably going to be 15 years ago now at 23rd Avenue Books, which doesn't even exist anymore, but... She was an amazing person to listen to because she didn't write anything like I did. I could not write the way she did. She would research something for four or five years and not take any notes. She even learned Japanese for one book. And then she would sit down and she would tell her husband not to let her write more than 16 hours a day. And she would go into her study and she would immediately write... 20 hours a day and just take little cat naps on her couch. And it explained to me why her books feel like a fever dream. When you read Anya or Madness of a Seduced Woman, um, you feel like you're that character and like you're a little bit insane. And now I see why, because she herself was a little, must have been a little bit insane from the lack of sleep and that intense concentration. And she would emerge like three weeks later with a book. Uh, everyone writes in different ways, and that might be the way for you. For me, I am more like just attack it regularly every day, um, chop wood, add to the pile. So um, today I'm going to be talking about how I stole from myself to create my first character, and then tomorrow I'll be talking about how to juggle life in the creative process. So my very first book was called Circles of Confusion. I should have brought one in here to show you guys. Um, it only exists right now as an ebook I put up myself because it came out in 1999, so that was a long time ago. And um, when I created the character of Claire Montres, uh, I knew that I didn't want to create a perfect person, one who knew Italian and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and who could hack into a computer with ease and who not only knew what, I don't even know how to say this, monologlonic shoes were and why they were important, but also um, two dozen pairs. I wanted to write about a real person, someone who's smart but never went to college. That part was unlike me. Someone who knows a, a little about everything and not very much about anything and feels like they're always trying to catch up. Someone who likes junk food and has to work hard not to gain weight. And um, it, that, like a lot of writers, I used a lot of my own backstory for my main character's past. Uh, Claire and I have had some of the same jobs, although I was never a vanity license plate verifier, which was Claire's job when we met her in Circles of Confusion. Claire grew up with hand-me-downs, same as I did. Um, Claire knew what it was like to grow up poor, and so did I, although Claire's life lacked um, certainty that mine had. I had uh, two loving parents, and she was born to a scatterbrained, unwed 16-year-old mother. Um, let's see. I, at the be I still, like Claire, I knew that there was no money for things, and I knew there was no point in asking. 
At the beginning, beginning of each school year, my parents would scrape together enough money for each of us to get one new pair of shoes to go back to school in. And, um, but it wasn't very much money and we had to go to one of the places that sold super cheap shoes. Like there was a chain store, at least in Oregon called Kinney's and we would go there and buy shoes. And cheap shoes are not made to be worn every single day. Um, I, I remember that the one, this one pair that I really liked, the bottoms were off the heels right away and I would sound like a horse when I clopped up and down the halls with this hollow sound. And there was one guy who called me Pony, which I absolutely hated. So um, uh, I took some of my own insecurities and I gave them to Claire. And it, Claire, writing about Claire gave me a way to explore those and even have fun with them. And um, uh, I remember years ago when I first, I think it was with the second book in the Claire series, I was traveling to California and I got crowded out into the aisle and I was wearing a backpack and I reached back and um, to put my arm through the backpack and shrug it on and um, ended up like grabbing the, um, the edge of the seat uh, armrest. And I remember thinking it felt kind of weird and I sort of ran my thumb over it. And then I realized I had not grabbed the seat armrest, I had grabbed some guy's crotch and um, couldn't put this in one of my books for teens. So uh, I basically accidentally groped this guy. So um, I remember thinking right after it happened, it would be a good thing to give to Claire. I'm not certain I ever did, but it was a way, she was a way for me to take things that happened to me that were super embarrassing and think about using them in a book. And um, I mean, like Claire, I'm never gonna be sophisticated. I'm always gonna spill stuff on myself. I'm gonna have hair that refuses to behave and I'm never gonna read some of these old uh, classic books that other people have read. Um, so what? The older I get, the more I realize everyone is trying to fit in. Um, so when I was 40, I read about something called the 20-40-60 rule. When you're 20, you know that everyone is looking at you and judging you. When you're 40, you decide you don't care. And when you're 60, you realize they were never looking at you at all in the first place. And I'm 61 now, and I think that's absolutely true. Anyway, tomorrow I'll be talking about how to juggle life in the creative process. Uh, feel free to ask any questions uh, you'd like me to address in a future video. Otherwise, I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.